briefly for 90 minutes. 90 minutes. Yeah. Uh, we will speak about uh, regions in turtles. Uh, no animals were harmed during uh, <laughs> taking the picture of the ducks in turtles. <laughs> okay. Uh, hello, gents and lads. Welcome to Rangers uh, uh, Israel Meetup number five, right? It's number five. Uh, this lecture will be about uh, Redux and Thermals. Uh, as Ron said, no dice were the harm during the, uh, this picture. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Vladimir Novik. I'm front end developer and architect at uh, 90 Min. Uh, you can see here my contacts. If you want to ping me on some questions, feel free. 90 Min is a, a sports media platform. We have tons of contributors around the globe with, uh, in 10 languages. Uh, uh, we distribute uh, content to various platforms, if uh, it's apps, if it's websites, social, uh, news. Uh, and our platform is written in ES6, React, and Redux. Um, I will make some assumptions for this talk. Um, I, I assume that you're familiar uh, at least with basics of React, uh, basics of Redux, Flux, and uh, ES6, uh, because my talk will be based on this. Um, today we'll talk about uh, several topics. We'll talk about Redux in a nutshell, uh, the basics of it, uh, some things you can do to modify uh, Redux. We will talk about writing your own uh, middlewares for Redux. Uh, we will talk about enhancing Redux store functionality and we will talk about workloads. Not the ones in space, but uh, the ones in React in this context. So let's begin with the nuts. Uh, uh, this flux looks like this. This is uh, taken from the documentation of uh, flags. Actually, it's not really like this. It's more like something like this, right? When you write a complex application, you have several stores and this picture, you need to register for it, uh, and such and such. Uh, in Redux, uh, things uh, look a little bit simpler. Uh, they can get uh, complex, but uh, still, as you can see, I have one store with the reducers in it and uh, the components over here and we'll go over this uh, a little bit later but uh, I assume you already know the, the basics. So, why Redux? First of all, uh, we have separation of concerns. We have uh, uh, our reducers, uh, non mutate states, uh, they return the, the modified state, all the state mutations in pure functions. Uh, Redux is uh, driven by functional programming paradigm, uh, meaning uh, less state mutations as possible, less side effects as possible, um, and it's awesome developer experience. Uh, I think I think uh, most of you seen the uh, talk of Dana Brammer on my YouTube channel uh, about time traveling in Redux. Uh, basically because we don't mutate state, we can uh, persist our state and, and uh, store it to undo, redo user uh, actions. Uh, Redux has three principles. Uh, first of all, uh, in Redux you have one single source of truth. You have store, which has uh, all application state, uh, which is composed of uh, different uh, reducers and, uh, and such. Uh, state is changed only and only by making uh, an action, uh, which is uh, pretty much uh, similar to uh, how Flux uh, works, uh, because Redux uh, originally was inspired by Flux. It just drove more to functional approach. Um, and mutations, as I talked before, are described as, uh, as pure functions, which are called the reducers. Um, the data flow in Redux is uh, like this. You have a view, and we're only seeing the, the mouse pointer, right? Um, you have a view which asks uh, an action creator uh, for an action. The action is returned to a view. The view, uh, or component in our case, tells the store to dispatch an action. 
uh, store uh, in turn passes the action to reducer, which is your function. Uh, this one character here is a root reducer, which uh, supplies the state into small chunks, which it can pass to the uh, uh, sub reducers. Um, all these ones uh, return the mutated state, and the mutated state gets uh, back to the store. Now, uh, in order to uh, update or render our components and update the state, you need to subscribe to the store. Uh, this guy over here uh, does that. Uh, in React ecosystem, it's done by uh, React uh, Redux. Uh, I will talk a little bit uh, later about uh, how it's done. And uh, basically, when the state is changed, uh, component gets new mutated uh, state tree. Uh, the copy uh, of state tree with uh, mutations. Um, all, all the, this, uh, this uh, stuff is pretty nice, but what if you need to write your own custom functionality? You need to uh, do something like uh, fetching from the server, uh, from inside the action creator. Uh, what, what can you do if action creator is basically a, a function which returns a simple ob object? For this case and for, for others, uh, we have middlewares. Middleware in the Redux is basically a wrapper around the, the dispatch. When, uh, when the action uh, is dispatched, uh, it goes through middleware chain. We'll talk a little bit later about how, how it looks actually in, in the code. Uh, it goes through the middleware chain until it uh, passes through all the middlewares. Uh, and each mid middleware in its turn can add its custom functionality to the, uh, to the dispatch. Uh, for example, we have a logger middleware. Uh, it's an API package called Redux Logger. In order to, uh, uh, to use middleware, we create our store, our uh, single uh, store in Redux, uh, passing it uh, apply middleware function from uh, uh, I forgot to import it, but from here uh, it's from uh, from Redux, uh, and I pass uh, a list of middlewares. Uh, basically, what happens when a dispatch call is triggered? It goes inside the create logger middleware. Create logger middleware uh, adds uh, custom functionality to the dispatch. Uh, and then it passes it to the next middleware in the chain. In our, in our case here, it's done. It can be other middleware, uh, it can be a Redux generator, async, whatever. Uh, there are lots of them. Um, well, in this case, you see that in console uh, output, console, in console log, you can see all the action, uh, actions emitted from the application through the dispatch call. And you can see the previous state, the action, and the next state. Um, it's pretty neat, you can use it, uh, hide it beyond the feature flag and uh, use it for debugging purposes. Uh, but it, you don't really, th there are lots of other uh, uh, complex uh, stuff that, that you need, uh, that you can do with uh, middleware. Um, so let's write our own, okay? So let, uh, let's write our own middleware. In order to write a middleware, we need to um, uh, implement a middleware signature. Uh, middleware signature, it, it means the, uh, the loop of how, uh, middle, uh, how middleware uh, takes parameters and returns parameters. In, in this case, uh, the, the middleware signature is uh, basically middleware is a function which as a parameter gets stored and it returns the uh, a function which gets as a parameter next, which returns a uh, function which gets as a parameter action. Um, this is uh, pretty vague until we see some code, so let's dive a little bit deeper in the code. Um, what if I told you that uh, if you want to use a fetch, you want to retrieve data from the server, for example. And you don't want to put your uh, fetch call inside lots of places in the code. You want just to emit an action to dispatch an action, 
uh, with uh, some parameter, uh, parameters which will, will be a simple object and uh, automatically you will get data from the server and uh, if uh, the request uh, succeeded you, uh, you have another action that, that is dispatched. So I wrote a fetcher middleware which gets, as a, uh, you can see, store uh, parameter returns a uh, function which gets next and uh, returns the function that gets action. I check if action type is fetch or fetch. Uh, and if so, I do some, uh, I do fetch, I take some arguments from the action state and uh, I basically do fetch. Uh, for example, in then, I check if result is okay. If so, I dispatch uh, uh, resolve action, uh, if not, I dispatch, uh, dispatch error action, uh, and in catch, I dispatch uh, reject action. So basically, my action creator will look like this. Uh, fetch from servo, type, state, uh, with all the data I need. And as you can see, there are no functions here except uh, lava here, which is transform. Uh, well, basically, I can also uh, add a transform property to the um, to, uh, to the action, uh, and then my transform uh, apply to the state transform is triggered. For example, you need to fetch uh, complex JSON from the server, but you need only uh, parameter A uh, or parameter foo. Uh, so you just pass transform, which is a function that dispatches in its turn uh, uh, another function, and all is done through reducers. You, you don't uh, all the, the state that you get from uh, from fetching from zero from uh, from catching errors it gets through uh, the reducer mechanism. Uh, so this is uh, how you write middleware. Uh, there are tons of things you can do with it, uh, but uh, just remember one phrase. Uh, middleware is just a wrapper around the dispatch. All you want to do with the dispatch, around the dispatch, is uh, uh, can be middleware. You can think of something uh, uh, something you need, right? Middleware is pretty simple and uh, you just get it. Okay, so uh, we just covered that we have uh, producers and all the uh, basic Redux mechanism, and we also can uh, write our own middlewares, right? Uh, but also we can write store enhancers. We can enhance our store with additional functionality. We can add uh, unlimited stuff, to, uh, unlimited things to our store. Um, and uh, I will show you some, uh, some example here with uh, uh, dependency injection, for example. You want to add the ability to inject your, uh, uh, to dispatch an action, uh, which is called inject, and uh, say, give me only this, uh, only a player, key, a state key, from the whole state of, uh, uh, of the application. Uh, and for example, console log this state. Uh, in order to do so, I create the action creator, which is called inject, uh, in my case, and uh, it passes uh, type, and redux, and inje uh, inject, state, and component. The store enhancer uh, signature, as we s we've seen signature before with uh, uh, the middleware, right? Store enhancer also have its own si signature. Basically, it gets as a parameter create store and returns create store. Uh, so, uh, it, as you can see, it's an uh, uh, enhancer that returns function which gets create store and all the arguments the uh, store gets and it overrides or, or uh, should I say it, it will uh, decorate the dispatch call and get state call with some fu custom functionality and in the end it will merge dispatch and get state on the original get state and dispatch of Redux. In this case, uh, dependency injection implemented uh, like this. You have inside store enhancer, or uh, actually this is, this will be our new store. You have uh, the I container. 
Uh, and in uh, every action, uh, inject action which I emit, uh, I write inside uh, inside this uh, array, I push component, uh, uh, which is component instance, and a state key. Uh, and then I return the stall this page uh, with, with the action. Basically, it's, uh, as you can see, it's a wrapper around this page, right? In get state, if a uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to add here a component. Uh, if I add, uh, if I get a parameter from uh, from the get state, if I get a component in, uh, as you can see here, it's uh, get state this. You pass the instance of component, right? Uh, you can filter the uh, the I container. Um, uh, check, uh, find uh, basically the item. In, uh, and, and its state key, and reduce it to the to one object which uh, with its uh, state key. Basically, it gives me the uh, the component uh, I wanted to inject. Uh, it will give, uh, give me sorry, it will give me a state key I wanted to inject inside uh, props of, uh, of the component. Um, there are uh, some tweaks that need to be done around this uh, dependency injection mechanism uh, because uh, right here I do I do only app store get state, but I need somehow to connect it to the you know the re rendering of the of the component, all the uh, all, all the re rendering functionality. Uh, we will uh, look at this later how, how it's done in the React Redux. And uh, basically, in order to implement this uh, this mechanism yourself, you need to write something uh, similar to provider in React Redux. Somebody, uh, you know what it is. You give a use case uh, you want to use it for. Inject in state map state to props. You want to inject your state, for example. Okay. okay. Uh, I I will repeat the question: Was uh, can I give a use case of? Uh, uh, of uh, such function uh, functionality, right? That was the question. Um, um, we will see in the next slide that there is an option to uh, pass map state to props function, uh, and instead of that, I can use inject. Um, basically, we created middleware, we created store and hand cell, uh, but we want to compose all of, all of them inside one uh, single store. That's how it's done. There is a compose function inside Redux, which you pass store enhancer and apply middleware with all middleware chain we want to apply. Uh, as a result, I will get create compose store, uh, and when uh, when I pass root reducer to it, I will get my uh, single store. Uh, so now we we get to the uh, interesting part of connecting. Uh, between all the Redux mechanism and React. Um, and it's called wormholes. Uh, before I will tell you why it's called wormholes, um, I think all of you are familiar what is uh, smart and dumb components uh, in one more. Who is uh, who's not familiar with it? Everyone is familiar, right? So I'll just skip the, uh, the slide. Uh, you can how you can pass store your components to your child components. You can pass it explicitly, right? You can in your root component uh, give to uh, props store, pass your uh, app store, and so on and so on until you get to the uh, uh, to the dumbest component. Uh, but uh, if you have something like uh, I don't know, 15 components uh, nested, it, it's not a good case uh, anyway, but. But still, <laughs> if, if you have such a case, you don't want, uh, and if you don't remember to pass your store, then you get bug and, and, and you debug it, and uh, it's a mess. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not like how it's supposed to be done. So uh, according to uh, some old uh, tweet of uh, Dan Abramov, uh, React had undocumented feature, now it's documented, uh, which is called context, which is basically a wormhole between uh, the component that uh, puts something in context and component that uh, defines it context types. So we can use this in, uh, for, for Redux, for, uh, for getting our state. Uh, and actually it's already was done in React Redux. 
Uh, in the root component, uh, your root component is wrapped inside a uh, provider uh, which has a store as a probe. Uh, provider in stern uh, writes a uh, state on, uh, on, on the context and uh, the um, container component or smart component um, uh, is exported with a connect function with, uh, we'll, we'll dig a little bit uh, more into it, but uh, it's exported with connect function with some functions right to it and the component itself. Uh, basically, it gives the ability in your container component or your smart component uh, to listen to state changes, uh, execute some of these functions, and uh, re render your component on demand. Um, the provider is written like this, I've already showed it in the previous slide. Um, you have provider and a store that is passed to. Uh, uh, you have store probes and uh, I pass application store to it. I have some uh, player container. It's uh, actually a small pet project of video player. Um, um, I chose for, for the presentation. Uh, but anyway, uh, I pass uh, application store to the provider. It's registered uh, state on the context. And uh, in order to uh, subscribe to the store in order to uh, get a uh, state of the store I need to export uh, connect outside of reactor Redux, which I pass a function called map state props and the player basically what what have uh, what's happening once the state is changed this function map state props gets executed and the return object of this uh, function gets inside the component props. Meaning, uh, if I want inside my component source, poster, and show controls, I get uh, them from state, from state player in this case. Uh, and the run it also answers your uh, question regarding inject. For example, if I don't want to explicit to have all my state here. Yeah, I don't want all my components to know all the, about all the state, I can do the, the inject or the store enhancer. Um, so all this uh, gets into the, the component props, and once uh, state changes or some of these props changes, the uh, component is rendered. But it's not the only function that, uh, uh, that, that can be passed to connect. This one is uh, uh, is required. If you don't pass map state to props, then you cannot subscribe to state changes, basically, uh, because that's what connect does. It just executes this function. Uh, how you pass? Uh, I will ask you a question. I already have an answer, an answer on the screen, but anyway, uh, how do you pass actions to your dumb components? Do something like this, right? You, you do this play and the, uh, we inside the 6 so I have to bind this and uh, I have a method here which is called play uh, and uh, it dispatches uh, action creator. Um, by the way, dispatch, connect also injects my dispatch inside the props. So you can use it out, uh, inside the component. But um, what happens if you have uh, lots of these, have lots of methods on, the, on your container class and you don't actually need this because it's just simple function which does the dispatch and that's it. So for this, you have map dispatch to props function. Uh, this function is passed to the second argument to the connect. Uh, and what it does, it does the same thing as map state to props, but uh, instead of uh, getting state as an argument, it gets a uh, dispatch as an argument. Uh, in this case, I, uh, in my return object, I have uh, the new prop, right? I have, uh, uh, it will be this prop actions. Uh, I call bind action creators, it's uh, another uh, Redux function, which can bind, uh, can wrap your uh, action creator inside the dispatch code, like in this example. It basically does this for you. Uh, so you, you pass bind action creators. All my action creators are imported from, uh, from here, from star, so I have uh, basically an object with keys, which are uh, the values of which are action creators. 
uh, and all these are passed inside the component probes. So I don't need even to define this new play method, I can just pass these probes action play. And in case I need to pass to the play some custom parameters or, or such, I just do uh, dot play dot part uh, or bind now with uh, the arguments I want to pass, it's called partial application. Uh, and that, that's it. It gives me much more. Uh, uh, I write less code and I get the same uh, the same functionality. Um, so let's summarize basically what we've done today. Uh, how much time I left? Five minutes, but uh, right. it is counted. Right? Hmm? Five minutes, but you can have a bit more. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. So let's summarize this. Uh, We've talked about the, the basics of re, uh, Redux, so the basics of Redux uh, mechanism. We talked about how you can write your own uh, middlewares. Uh, we talked about how you can write your own Stonehands and then why you can do, do, uh, do this and how you can extend your custom functionality to Redux. Uh, and we talked about the connection from Redux to React with React Redux. When provider is uh, a component that wraps uh, your root component uh, and passes state to the context, the first, the one end of the wormhole, and the second end of the wormhole is uh, connect, which can get uh, or maps, uh, which can get map state to props function and uh, maps the uh, map dispatch to props function which in turn can inject uh, probes from the state inside the component itself or wrap your, uh, your action creators with, with this patch. Uh, you also have in React Redux, you also have merge probes and you have uh, some other functionality. I won't cover it today, uh, but uh, encouraged uh, if you want to, you, you, you can uh, uh, look at the repo, it's uh, well documented and uh, ready to use. Uh, so, uh, basically it's it. Thank you for watching. And if you want to write a few words to us, uh, we have one at the, this email at the 90 min, also by hiring. Uh, yeah. uh, we have time for questions? questions? Yeah, we have time for questions. It was a very deep dive. <laughs> internals. I wanted to put internals of the duck, but. You know. <laughs> uh, isn't uh, isn't uh, adding functionality to the dispatch uh, call a violation of uh, suppression concerns? Because I look at Redux as a state manager. And by adding functionality like fetching from server and adding side effects, um, seems to uh, tightly couple your your state manager to some other sort of stuff that might be handled separately. Uh, the question was: uh, um, Redux is uh, uh, based on separation of concerns, and if I add some. Uh, uh, custom uh, functionality to uh, Redux, to middlewares and the uh, store enhancer, uh, it couples uh, my functionality to the state manager, which I want to be uh, generic, right? That, that's the question. Uh, well, uh, the, the whole uh, middleware chain is uh, built uh, with the function, uh, function composition in mind. And it's function plus the function, and it all composes to, to one. Um, uh, in in uh, the case of uh, fetch, for example, uh, instead of doing uh, middlewares, you can use uh, uh, thumb middleware and fetch uh, from the server. But it will give you additional side effects inside the thumb because thumb is used for side effects, uh, and uh, it will uh, your code not, won't be dry. In this case, you put it in one place. And uh, this uh, this thing is, is something you need. You need to fetch something from the server. So uh, uh, maybe you close the eyes on, on uh, that, that it's not really uh, uh, decoupled in this case. But uh, you reduce side effects inside the, the whole application. I hope this sounds well. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, the question was, uh, other than developer ex uh, experience, uh, what is the value of the immutable state, right? Um, uh, well, should component update. <coughs> yeah. Uh, let's think about uh, not immutable state and lots of places in the phone that uh, mutate the state. Uh, let's pretend that, that everything is working fine and you know where uh, the, the turn of when components uh, uh, update the state, but uh, it can uh, lead uh, easily to bugs. Uh, it can lead to uh, long nights of debugging because you don't know who changed your, your state and, and why. Um, and um, using Redux uh, encourages you to, uh, not to mutate state, encourages you to return the copy of the state. Except uh, the, all this stuff, uh, it's uh, really uh, fun and, uh, and easy to, to debug uh, in case you have bugs. Uh, you can persist your state, and you can undo, redo, uh, which is called time travel by Donald Brown, uh, and uh, other amazing stuff. That I hope this answers. Well, okay. yeah. well, uh, in some of implementations of uh, should component update, uh, you can find yourself getting uh, equality because you're basically comparing previous states to current state, and it's the same instance. So even though uh, it was it mutated, you still get the equality. Uh, but if you're holding a really immutable uh, state object, even provided by li library like immutable JS, uh, then uh, this uh, this uh, will never happen. Yeah, this is uh, also a good example. Uh, yeah. So my concern is uh, about every um, every action causing uh, the reducers to. Uh, actually clone the, the state, the program state tree. So, for a very big production, you uh, have a very big state tree and something very small in the world. Still, all the reducers are going to, uh, to work just to realize that they don't need to, do, to actually do anything. So, can that lead to performance issues or memory issues? Um, uh, the question was if I have a, a huge production app and uh, um, I have lots of reducers and nested reducers that, that are called anyway when, uh, when, the, uh, when the action is dispatched, uh, can it lead to performance problems, right? Um, basically, when your action is dispatched, uh, all the reducers are, are simple functions which get input and output, right? They execute in turn and uh, and uh, they don't clone the state, they, uh, they give you back the, the modified and mutated state, right? Uh, so in this, uh, uh, in this case, it's, it's much better than, uh, for example, in, in Flux, uh, you hold your state on, inside the store, and uh, um, the store is, it's, uh, it's a lot of instances, for example, of the stores, and uh, everything has got to be updated, uh, and uh, you have components listening to several stores, and it, it can be messy. So in case of, uh, of real big production environment, um, it won't be performance problem. But I, I can uh, tell this by experience, because we have a million units, uh, and we have production up based in Redux, and no performance issues. I think that the, uh, the issue is no time to, to understand is that the, the, the state is not copied all the time. Only the, the, the action that actually has mutated the state changes it. The rest of the, the state remains the same level as so you actually know that it didn't change. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Uh, the, uh, passing them, but it's still the same level. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm not allowed to, ask, uh, to answer questions anymore, so if you have uh, still questions on, on break, you can, uh, I will be there, or here, and you can uh, approach me and, uh, and ask. Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks, Vladimir. Uh, just a show of hands, who, who is working with the Redux here?